This video is sponsored by FontLab. There are a few things to understand with hyperlinks. When you style hyperlinks, keep in mind that the hyperlink text must meet the contrast ratio for text. So at least four and a half to one ratio for normal text and at least three to one for large text for double A conformance, and then at least seven to one for normal and four and a half to one for large text for triple A. Now hyperlink text must also have at least three to one contrast with surrounding body text, unless you're styling the hyperlinks with something like an underline, which is actually better for usability and accessibility anyway. Plus it can be hard to find a color that meets the contrast requirement against the background and the surrounding body text. So I recommend using some kind of underline because people have come to understand that an underline means that that text is a hyperlink. Now, if you do use styling such as an underline or a background instead called the hyperlink indicator, then it must have at least a three to one contrast ratio against the background. Here's an example where contrast between the background and the surrounding body text is being used. And then here are some examples where the hyperlink text meets the contrast requirement against the different backgrounds. So in the first one, red against white, in the second one, black against red, and in the third one, white against red. And styling has been used as well, an underline or a background. Okay, let's take a look back at the example where contrast is being used to convey that the text is a hyperlink. The red hyperlink text has 4.53 to one contrast against the surrounding black body text. The red text also has sufficient contrast against the white background, which is fine for AA conformance. Here's an example where the hyperlink text is the same color as the surrounding text. The text has sufficient contrast against the background, that's the black against white, but we need to use styling to convey that these words are a hyperlink. In this example, there's a hyperlink indicator, the yellow underline, but it doesn't have at least three to one contrast with the white background. So some people may not be able to tell that this is a hyperlink. So we could simply change the color of the underline to something with sufficient contrast against the white background, like this green. Now, if we use the green as a background color instead of an underline, we now have to make sure that the hyperlink text color, black in this case, has sufficient contrast against the green. It has 6.7 to one, which is fine for AA conformance. And as we saw with the last example, we already know that the green has sufficient contrast against white, which is needed for the hyperlink indicator, the green background against the white background. With hyperlinks, you also want to think about their states, such as the hover state. This example shows the default state before the hyperlink is hovered over with a red dashed underline, and that gets removed when the link is hovered over. In this example, the default hyperlink is purple text with an underline of the same color, and the hover state is white text against a purple background. So you can get a bit creative. Here's a demo to show you the default state for hyperlinks on my website. So the hyperlinks have a dotted blue underline and the hyperlink text is blue. And then when you hover over them, the dotted line is removed. Okay, so let's move on to social media icons. If you have hyperlinked social media icons with no accompanying text labels, so it's just the icons, then you'll wanna make sure that they meet the non-text contrast requirement in their default state. These particular icons are dark blue over orange, which passes for the non-text contrast requirement. You also wanna make sure the hover state is distinguishable. You could potentially reverse the colors of the foreground and background. And you actually don't have to use contrast, by the way. You could also potentially have the icon enlarge or shrink on hover. You can get kind of creative with these based on the available options that you have with CSS. Even if you're not the one actually developing the site to understand what's available to you, that will allow you to be able to design 
to know what you have in your arsenal that you can use to design for that you know can be coded by the developer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.